This video is going to be part two of my Herms build series, if you want to call it that. In the first video, I showed you guys how I polished these kegs to mirror finish. And then in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I turned the polished keg that had no modifications um, into this, which is going to be one of the tanks for our Herms system. So what we did was we welded in the fittings using a MIG welder. Um, and I'll walk through all of that. Um, but the first step you're gonna need to take right now is we need to get the top off this keg. So the easiest way to do that is gonna be if you have a keg tap laying around to use it to bleed off the pressure inside of this keg. Um, if you don't, what you can do is you can use a screwdriver or something to push this down, but you gotta be pretty careful because there can be a lot of pressure in these kegs. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the keg tap, bleed off the pressure, and then I will show you guys how we're gonna go about cutting a nice circular hole like you see here um, and remove the top from this keg. So stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy this video. What we're gonna do here is we've got our keg tap installed and we're gonna bleed the pressure off of this. So you unscrew the top of your tap here and you'll hear it start to hiss. And that should be your pressure bleeding off. If you do this really fast, you might get some beer flying out the top here. So that's why I'm kind of holding the tap. But we're gonna let that go. Just let this hat go all the way until you hear no more hissing. And then you'll be good to start working on cutting the top off of this. I just realized I've, I skipped a step completely. So after you bleed off the pressure, before you cut the top off, what I like to do is remove the actual stem that goes into the keg. So there's probably a tool for this, but it's pretty easy. You can do it with some flathead screwdrivers. If you see these two gaps here, um, the little notches, what you do is you get a flathead screwdriver in there and you pry this ring out. There's a ring here. You're gonna pry that out and then you're able to twist the stem and lift it out. So I'm gonna get the camera set up to show you guys me getting that out and then we'll go on to cutting the top after we pull the stem out. So we're gonna look at the ring and see where the starting point on it is, which just so happens to be right here. So that should maybe be easy for us, might not be. So as you can see, I got part of it up there. What I'm gonna do too is use a combination of uh, needle nose and the flathead, so I pried that out. Now we're just gonna go around here and get this ring out. I'm not reusing these, so I don't really care if it gets damaged at all. And there you go, the ring is out. Now, sometimes these stems can be a little bit stuck in here, which this one is. So there's these two tabs here and you can kind of hit them to get it into place there. And there's two more tabs now on the actual stem itself, which have to line up with those two grooves and then you should be able to just lift it right out here. There we go. And there's the stem. So just to show you up close on the top of this, you have these tabs on the side there. There's two tabs there and they line up with those two holes after you get the ring out. So now that we've got that off, I'm gonna dump whatever is in here out because it's probably pretty nasty by now. And then I'm gonna cut the top off. I'm outside for this next part because it kind of makes a mess and I don't feel like vacuuming up the entire garage because there's going to be a lot of dust and sort of metal shavings that come from this. So in order to cut the top off, I saw a few other people do this and it actually works pretty well. So I just made this little L bracket out of 2x4s that I had laying around. Cut a 2.5 inch hole with a hole saw here. That's because then this will fit perfectly over where your valve stem came out of so that you can rotate this around and it'll make you a nice even cut. Um, I use hose clamps to hold this in place. Unfortunately with the angle grinder I'm using, I'm using the powered one versus the battery one because the battery stuck out and made this a really weird angle as well as I had to leave the power switch on. So what I do is I just plug it in and then uh, hold it very carefully and put it onto the keg because otherwise uh, I, there's just no way for me to reach the power switch. But Besides that, I also had to add a little bit of a wedge here because you want your angle of the blade to sort of be vertical, I'd say. And whereas if I don't have that wedge, the angle is not so vertical, essentially. Um, 
but this works pretty well. Just take your time with it, let the tool do the work. If you try and plunge it really deep with pressure, what you're gonna get is you're trying to cut a circle with something that isn't circular. So you're gonna end up making like slashes versus making a nice circle around the keg. So just let, just barely let the tip of the blade touch and cut the circle and just keep going around and around and around until you're through all the way. I'd say that's the best way to do it. It will take a little bit of time and I found that using four and a half inch discs was better than four inch discs because when you hit these little ribs on the top of the keg, the four inch discs when this part of the grinder slides over them or this, it's sort of raised too high off the keg in order to actually be cutting the keg. So I'd go with four and a half inch if I were you guys. Um, but I'm gonna get to it and I'll put a little time lapse in here of me doing it so you see it works and then we'll be on to the next step. So once you've gotten the top cut off, the next thing I'd say you want to do is you want to just hit the edges here because they are still pretty sharp. I'd say hit them with a flat disc, so I'm using an 80 grit flat disc. Just going to round them off pretty nicely like I did on the first keg. That way uh, you don't possibly cut your arm or anything like that on them. Um, one thing I forgot to mention also I realized was when you're making this, you have to make a decision on how far you want the radius of your circle to be. Um, so what I did was I measured from roughly the center of where the stem was on the top here out to the edge. And then I built my circle or my radius of my cutting, uh, cutting jig here, if you want to call it that, based off the same thing. That way, my goal was personally to try and get the largest radius possible. That way I can get in here easily and get my coil in, no problems. So that was the way I did that. Now, like I said, all we're going to do is we're going to take our flat disc and we're just going to grind the edges. You don't have to, you don't have to do it very hard at all. Um, all you have to do is just give them a quick grind around. I'm not going to show that because it's pretty self-explanatory. And then we're going to move on to starting to cut the holes for our fittings. So stay tuned. Good idea before you go drilling any holes, which I forgot to mention earlier, is you want to have a build play a build plan or layout a uh, rough idea of what you want to try and do so that's what i have here we downloaded this picture off the internet um, and kind of just made it our own so this is basically so that i know what holes roughly i need to cut into each tank and how many fittings i'm going to need and i drew my own plans as well um, just roughly that way i knew what i wanted to happen for each tank so i know that in my first tank my hlt tank i'm going to need a total of four half inch female couplings as well as one tri clamp fitting for my heating element in my second tank my mash ton i know i'm going to need two half inch female couplings as and then i need a drain setup on the bottom which i have a i think a neat drain setup to show you guys especially if you're doing a kegel build and then for my boil kettle i know i needed two half inch mbt female couplings again 
as well as another tri-clamp fitting for my heating element. So that sort of maps it all out in my head. And that makes it much easier for you to drill the holes because you have a rough idea of what you're trying to do. So now we're gonna move on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a hole saw to cut the majority of the holes. I found that was the easiest way to make pretty clean holes. And then you can clean them up after with a Dremel or a file. Um, so we're gonna move on to doing that and I'll show you guys how it goes. In order to get the holes cut like this, what you're gonna wanna do is if you need to take any measurements, you wanna do that and make sure you're putting the holes in the right places. I wouldn't recommend putting a hole on these lips. I think it would just be really difficult to attach your fitting however you want to do that. Um, what I'm using is I am using some Diablo hole saws. These things work really good. I have a two and a half inch one. Uh, correction, I think it's two and a quarter. It's two and a quarter inches and then this is one inch. Um, that two and a quarter inch one is for my tri-clamp fittings and then the one inch one is for the rest of my half inch uh, female couplings. So these work really good. Um, what you want to do is you want to use some kind of a punch. I'm using this as my punch uh, and a hammer just to get a hole. Then drill a pilot hole with a smaller drill bit. And then use that for your larger drill bit on your hole saw. And just take your time. Use some WD-40. That's what's all over these right now. Some WD-40 or some sort of cutting or lubricating oil um, to try and keep the heat down. Go slow with your bits and just take your time and double check everything before you make your cuts because once you make your cuts, obviously you can't go back. So I'm gonna get the other keg cut up now so that everything is in the same page. And then I will show you how I have my bottom drain set up and uh, I guess we will move on to welding some fittings into place. After you get all of the holes cut, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need to attach your fittings. And the way you attach your fittings is definitely gonna be dependent on the kind of fittings you bought. The fittings I bought are just some standard couplings there's no sort of dimple on them or anything like that um, a lot of people opt to go for soldered fittings but there's really no way for me to solder these the way I decided to cut the holes I plan to weld it the whole entire time I'm using a MIG welder um, with trimix gas and stainless steel uh, wire uh, 030 now people debate whether you should MIG weld these or TIG weld these and do you have to worry about sort of the weld like sugaring or whatnot on the inside. When I went to the welding store I explained exactly what I wanted to do to the guys that worked there and they figured that they said they I didn't need to back purge um, because I'd probably still get a little bit of that sugaring with the back purge anyways and given how big these are I'd need a, an insane amount of gas to back purge them. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just doing the MIG weld and then I'm sort of inspecting the inside and seeing how it looks And what I may do is I haven't decided yet is if I'm gonna try and solder Over the inside because what people typically do is they solder so I don't see anything wrong I'm not actually using the solder as a structural joint I'm just using the solder as a barrier between what will be in the keg and the actual weld So I might do that might not we'll see how it goes, but I'm not gonna show you guys how I MIG weld. Um, if you guys know how to weld, that's great. If you don't, I would recommend going the soldering route. Um, but I'm by no means any expert. Here's my one weld. I'm trying to make it as clean as possible. I still need to clean that up, but uh, you know, you gotta learn somewhere. So I'm gonna get all these fittings welded in and then we will start, um, actually, I'll lay out all the pieces and explain how I'm gonna plumb the rest of this. So stay tuned. Finished welding all three kegs. Um, some welds are a lot nicer than others, but I tried to stack dimes and uh, I did all right in some cases and not so great in others, but that's okay. Ideally, if you could, you would TIG weld this. I don't have a TIG welder and I don't know how to TIG weld, so that wasn't really an option. Um, my biggest concern, as I mentioned before, is the sanitariness of the welds and the sugaring on the inside is definitely a concern. It isn't really too bad. Um, I did grind down with a wire wheel the insides to kind of see how it would look. But there is like a very, very small gap on the inside of the keg between the fitting and the walls from where the hole saw was that the weld didn't exactly fill. So my solution to that is that even though I, if I had done the soldered method, I would have used dimple. Uh, pull through fittings to sort of create a dimple or I would have used a dimpling tool or something like that That way I could get the solder to beat up really nicely in there Right now the gap is so small 
and it's not really easy to get the solder to beat up in there. I tried. Um, what I came up with as my solution is I'm actually using a bigger hole saw. So I cut all the holes with a one inch hole saw and a two and a eighth hole saw, I wanna say, or two and a quarter, I forget exactly. But um, what I'm using right now for the one inch, one inch fittings is I have a one and one eighth inch hole saw. And what I'm doing is I'm going on the inside and I'm actually cutting away just a little bit of the metal, not a ton. I'm not worried about going all the way through, punching through, I'm being careful with it. And I am creating a dimple with the hole saw. Not exactly the most ideal way to do it, but it's kind of a creative way to do it. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. I'll try maybe and insert a picture here and just split the footage apart for a second to show you guys even better what I am referring to. But that actually worked out perfectly for me to lay in a bead of solder that made a nice little bead right around the hole um, fitting, which is exactly what I wanted to do because I wanted to, I would trust the solder a lot more than I do my welding um, in terms of sanitariness because that's what the majority of people use and it seems to be the better route if you aren't TIG welding. Could you get away with the MIG weld? I suppose you could. That's your choice. My goal is to have these for a long time and to be as clean as I can building them myself. So that's the option I'm going with. I think it's kind of a creative solution. I haven't seen anybody else do it that way, but we're gonna roll with it. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how I actually put down the solder to get it to work, um, as well as I'll tell you what solder I used and what flux I used. And I can show you how I did the whole saw method as well. Um, and then from there, I'm going to lay out all my fittings so you can see everything and in between that I'm actually going to wash these kegs out. They, they obviously need a good wash. Um, we're going to get them all cleaned up before I put any fittings in and then we'll be pretty much ready to go. So stay tuned and uh, looking forward to finishing this up. Alright so just to demonstrate how I'm going to sort of create that artificial dimple, I am going to show you guys. I'm doing this, so I'm taking the hole saw. Again, these are these fittings uh, were inside. They're less than, they're just about an inch. I measured them with veneer calipers. Um, and so I'm using the one and one eighth inch hole saw. We're just gonna drill a little bit. We just wanna remove a little bit of metal to create that like artificial dimple is what I'm gonna call it. That way there's a nice spot for the solder to beat up in and harden. And that's all we're gonna do. So I'm gonna fit this in here. I'm going to check it sort of periodically every once in a while to see that it's sort of working and that's all we're going to do. So I'm just going to keep doing that and uh, then I'll show you guys how we're going to put the solder on. As you can see I have cut that sort of dimple around the fitting now. And what I'm gonna do is I need to make up a circle of solder. So the easiest way to do this is to take a fitting that's either not in the keg already, um, or just use one, of, I'm gonna use one of the kegs that's standing up and I'm gonna bend it around to make a nice little circle. That way I can sit it over the top of this. And then uh, before we do that, we're gonna add some flux. So we're gonna paint, it's uh, liquid flux. This is what we're using. Stay clean, this is safe for stainless steel, as well as I went on the Harris website for this as well, and this was what they recommended for stainless steel. So we're using both of these. This is a relatively thick um, solder diameter, I'd say. Uh, it's 0.118. Um, I'm used to working with electrical solder, so that's considerably smaller, typically. Than, this is a lot bigger than what I use, but it's all right. So I'm gonna bend this around in a circle around the fitting, essentially all we're gonna do is that. Um, I'm gonna get the flux on. You're gonna want to use uh, for sure a respirator, like a good respirator, not just like an N95 mask, an actual respirator, as well as eye protection, I'd say, and gloves for this. This stuff is nasty. You do not want to breathe it in. You don't want it on your skin. Um, so make sure you're wearing the proper protection. Um, I'm gonna get that done and then I'll switch the camera over. We're gonna use the blowtorch and we're gonna torch the actual fitting. I'm just saying this right now because I'm not gonna be able to talk when I have the respirator on. So we're gonna to torch the actual fitting, not apply direct heat to the solder. We're gonna let the thermal heat sort of melt the solder. And then once we see it start to melt and interact with the flux, we'll cut the heat off, let it melt and let it harden up. And that should be it.
Once the uh, solder has cooled off a lot, what I use is a, like a 50-50 alcohol, rubbing alcohol and water solution. And you can use that to clean up any remaining flux that you have. You don't want to do this when it's crazy hot because what I read is you can actually fracture your solder joint. It won't see it, but it'll be microscopic, theoretically weakening it. Um, so let it cool down first and then wipe it off and you're good to go. As you can see, we got that nice solder bead that I was looking for. So I'm going to repeat the process to all the fittings, even the big two, two inch uh, tri-clamp fittings. And what I'm going to use for that is I drilled those holes with a two and a quarter inch hole saw. So what I'm going to do is I have a two and a half inch hole saw laying around. I'm going to use that also. Same process, um, make the bead of solder, put flux inside your uh, dimple groove, and then just heat it up from the bottom, hitting the actual fitting, and you're good to go. So once I get that done, then we're going to move on to cleaning these out and plumbing it up. I have the one of the three uh, kegs all rigged up now. Basically what we have going on here is we have the uh, fittings that I welded in. Everything's half inch, um, half inch MPT. So then it goes to a 90 degree elbow. We have a nipple to a T. We did the T's because we wanted to do temperature sensors on our inlets and outlets, um, mostly so that we can kind of just keep an eye on what's going on. And we're not doing a physical temperature gauge. Um, as of right now, there's always the possibility to add that. We have a temperature sensor here um, as well for the tank, and then we're gonna do temperature sensors on the inlet and outlet, like I said. We're doing electric ball valves. Um, my roommate is doing brew control, I wanna say. he's That's gonna be the third video in this series, probably, is he's gonna explain uh, how he wired everything right now. Here's this preview of what he's got going on. He's building a whole control unit for it. So the goal for us is we wanna have full automation uh, hopefully we're not sure we can get that but we're gonna give it a try but for that reason we're doing the electric ball valves um, everything's stainless steel though and then we have the um, mail cam locks and then so what I'm gonna do now I guess is just show you how I uh, fit all that up I'll just do one finish the rest um, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when we're all done in order to sort of plumb up uh, my inlets and outlets and such what we're doing is as I showed you guys I'm doing the 90 degree um, elbow where then that goes to a nipple here so you would do this all this you would also use ptfe uh teflon tape um i was reading on some homebrew forms and people were going back and forth on whether the tape is safe or not um for in terms of food quality some guys said that they changed it out every uh batch they brewed and then other people were saying that's not a good idea i'm gonna go with leaving the same tape on these all the time because you don't want to just be constantly unscrewing everything. Um, and from what I read, based off of what I read, I'm going to go with, I think it is food safe. Um, so I think we'll be fine there. So what we're doing is we would do the tape on these. I'm just doing it loosely to show you guys. Um, then we have our T and then we're going to do another nipple. So we can attach the ball valve. And these ball valves, uh, as I mentioned, they're electric. And then we've got our compression fitting here in the T so we can get our temperatures on the inlet and outlet. Um, something to keep in mind is the reason why we're doing it in this order is because if you did your temperature fitting on the other side of the ball valve, it wouldn't give you a reading. It would only give you a reading when it's open, whereas this will give us a reading all the time, which is kind of nice. Um, and then we're doing the cam lock fittings because I think these are the easiest way to move the lines around. So that's a male cam lock and then there it is essentially. You tight everything down. Um, pipe wrenches are probably your best bet to tighten this stuff. Um, for the actual lines, what I have is the female cam locks. So these are female cam locks with female threading. Um, and then what we're going to do is I have these half inch uh, line. They're half inch MBT and then half inch line uh, hose barbs. And I'm just going to do this in here. We'll be able to move these cam locks around from all of our, uh, all of our male cam locks and it should work out really well. So I'm going to get the rest of this done and then we'll show you guys what it all looks like. So stay tuned. The last things I'm going to be installing on these kegels is I need to install my Herms coil. And the way we're doing that is I'm using these compression fittings. You don't have to fully unscrew them, but I'll take it apart to show you guys what's in here. These are dual ferrule compression fittings. So you have one that's angled like this and then another piece that has one ring and a smaller piece. That smaller sort of lip goes inside facing this direction. And then what you do is that's going to slide over the actual pipe that you're trying to connect to. So what we'll do is I'm going to slide this on first. 
which is the rear like nut if you want to call it that then the smaller ferrule with the smaller piece facing forward then the larger ferrule with the smaller end facing forward and then this is a bore through completely ferrule which is kind of nice because if you need to you can sort of slide it back or forward a little more what i did have to do is i had to cut the uh, leads on the herms coil down a little bit so i'm not going to tighten the actual part where it's going to compress down into the pipe yet because if you do that then you won't really be able to turn this very well to tighten it inside the keg so i'm going to tighten these first to the fittings that i have installed in the keg and then i'm going to tighten this down um, you might need a pretty small pair of pliers or something and have to get a little creative on how to do that but i'm going to get this installed show you guys what it looks like then the last thing to do is i'm going to show you the drain the bottom drain setup i have and then i'll do a quick overview of everything and we're pretty much done so the last thing that I think I have to show you guys, and if I forgot anything else, I will include it after this, is the bottom drain setup I have for these kegs. So I got this from Brew Hardware. It's pretty nice. It's a hinge design because obviously you need something that's hinged. There's no way to just put something flat in here. So they have a nice hinge design, uh, this sort of sort of center piece, and then it's a center bottom drain pickup. I think I still will, will be able to get some whirlpooling because uh, where I have the work coming in I've got a 90 on it so I think it'll whirlpool a little so all we're gonna do to set this up is we're gonna take this little piece set it right in the center and then I'm gonna drop this guy down inside folded and then open it up just be careful because it can kind of pinch your finger we're just gonna set it right down and it will flatten out really nice and it's actually a perfect uh, perfectly dimensioned so big they did a really nice job on this and then this uh, center drain tube pickup uses a compression fitting. Now what I'm not gonna do is I'm not really gonna crank this down every time because it's got a plastic ferrule in here. So I'm imagining that when you wanna clean this, you wanna remove this whole setup. So I'm just gonna like hand tighten this um, and it'll be fine. It's more just so we're not sucking up tons of, uh, tons of grain essentially when we're mashing in. But what we're gonna do to install this is I'm just gonna put it down in the drain tube there and then I sort of welded it and test fitted before so that it lines up perfectly and I can just thread this right in very easily and then uh, that's pretty much it for that so I'm just gonna do a quick one uh, like one minute overview of everything we got set up now and then that'll be the end of this video so we have gotten everything completely plumbed up and now these tanks are essentially ready to go. We just have a little bit of wiring left to do. Um, the majority of our work is now gonna be in what will be part three of this video, which is the electronic control box for this. Um, we're gonna use brew control. As that's not my area of expertise. My uh, roommate's handling all of that. But as you can see, we've got the ball valves. Our temperature sensors, I started cutting them down to size a little bit better. Um, we're gonna use XLR connectors and cables um, to connect these all to the control box. That way we can disconnect everything really easily and move them around. That'll, I'll explain more of that in uh, video in part three. For the meantime, if anybody does have any suggestions on how to really attach these, if you got any tips, tricks, I'd love to hear it in the comments because right now we did find a 3D printed model, but we aren't 100% sure how we want to attach these or if we're just going to let them hang. I know that isn't the cleanest look, but it's right. Um, so as you can see, the Herms coil is in, heating elements are in, we have the bottom mash drain in there, and then we have another heating element in our boil kettle. Um, I'm super excited to see how this has progressed and I've gotten a lot of good feedback uh, from the first video I made so I'm excited to put this video out as well as hopefully soon the third video will not take as long to make between the time it took me to do the first video and this one. Um, as, as always if you have any comments or questions please feel free to throw it in the comments and I do my best to try and read them all and stay on top of it and get back to anyone with questions. So thank you again and we will see you in part three.